I don't have any personal um, like affiliation with mental illness. I've never actually, you know, suffered anywhere near as much any kind of mental disorders as the people I work with. But um, I had a close friend of mine who went to Afghanistan, uh, and he served for he only completed four months of his six month tour, and he was called off the front line because he just couldn't hack it. And this was one of the nicest guys I'd ever met, and I was really intrigued to see how that had impacted on his life and how that had, that experience had changed him in. It's kind of this like, almost like a shell of a person when he came home. Um, I then met someone by, by accident through another project I was doing while I was studying at, um, at university in Falmouth, um, who was a veteran of the Falklands. And initially it was just a portrait project, so I was just taking photographs of people who had, had served in, the, in combat zones. He's actually up in the, in the, in the gallery around the corner. He was, um, he was commanding at the time uh, HMS Glamorgan when it was hit by an S-set missile. Um, and his result in actions when he turned the ship caused the ship to be saved and no doubt countless of lives saved um, because it was the first ship that ever survived the hit by an S service of. But in the process, 14 servicemen died in the subsequent explosion of fire. You, you shouldn't think that it's just one thing, it's actually a massive landscape of various different things and people suffer in different ways and it affects their lives in, in a range of different ways and I just wanted to explore that and one thing I found which was kind of common with most people I work with is that they really struggled to kind of communicate exactly what it was like so they would get very frustrated and one guy I work with who's actually in the photo there in Manchester United he hadn't actually been to Tesco's or Sainsbury's in about three years you couldn't actually hack being in a supermarket which is something we take for granted I suppose um, he would walk in and he'd be looking for hard targets, soft targets, exit routes, you know, people talking to him. He just couldn't deal with that. And, you know, I wanted to be able to take that and use my, my, my kind of learned skill as a photo journalist to give him a voice and to let him talk to you through the picture and through the caption so you can actually get a really good idea of what he's doing. I'm in a unique position now that through many years of work it's gone into the media and it's given me an opportunity to be able to start a campaign for greater awareness and although my background is in the military and I believe my PTSD probably came to fruition um, in the military, I like to you know, think that there are many, many other people out there who are suffering from all forms of PTSD so even though mine is from the military, I talk and I try to engage with people of all forms of PTSD so rape victims, um, people have been in car crashes, there is a huge number of people who are forgotten. It's always in the media, especially recently when people come back from Iraq and Afghanistan, I don't want to take anything away from them. However, there are lots of people who are just you know, forgotten at the end of the day and we should remember that you know, PTSD can be caused by thinking that you might be hit by a bus and you're just driving to work or something like that. Is that anybody that has any mental health condition, not just PTSD, feel that they can go to their manager or their boss or family friends without fear um, of recrimination. I lost a job because I declared I had PTSD. Um, I know it's, that's, this is 10 years ago, but I want, you know, without fear, any of us to be able to go and then, you know, we're not expecting some big boss to put their arm around us and give us a hug. I probably would, but at the end of the day, just the fact that, you know, we can walk through that door and know. Um, and I know there's many people here who are trying to do these things that are playing stigma. And what I say is the more and more of us that are speaking, the more we will probably you know, get through it. It's a lifelong thing and I'll certainly be continuing until, um, until the day I die. Stress is probably at similar levels in the armed services than it is in civil society. It's yeah. probably surprising given what they go through. Mm -hmm. um, but that's because they're very well looked after in service. Mm -hmm. But the fact is they're broken for slightly different reasons than their civilian counterpart. And they deserve a slightly different approach. Mm. Um, the MOD does offer that. The NHS mm. is doing more and more to offer that. 
and yeah. societies such as Combat Stress also offer that particular service yeah. where we understand what they've been through, where they're coming from and where they want to end up. Yeah. We've, been, we've been involved as a partnership with, yeah. uh, and we still are involved with a partnership with the, yeah. with the NHS and other regions like the Royal British Legion yeah. um, to help reach out because one of the biggest things surrounding mental health, if you like, at the moment is stigma and it's the ability of people have to ask, people ask for help, there is a huge amount of help out there for them. Yeah. So it's breaking down these barriers yeah. um, that actually these guys, you know, it's not a consequence that they're not strong, it's simply that often they've been trying to be too strong for too long on their own. Yeah. And, you know, problem shares are problem halved, you know, the old granny's tale, but it is true. Yeah. Um, and those that ask for help and get it, it is out there for them. Um, they can, they can, they can be treated uh, yeah. for what it is they're suffering. Um, they don't need to suffer alone.